2021 was the COVID. She had an instance where she got um, got to the games. I mean, I, I believe flew into Madison and tested positive for COVID. And uh, that was that was the year where I think a lot of people were expecting that she was potentially gonna, you know, be on the podium. So and that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. And then, uh, and then last year, of course, uh, her back injury. But it's great to see her back. Loving, loving how she's doing. You know, the, the last two years have just been absolutely heartbreaking. Um, you know, two years ago, I think I would have put my life savings down that Bethany was standing on that podium. Um, and to not even have the opportunity to like go get that just felt like she was like robbed. In CrossFit, you have the open and then a week and a half later is quarterfinals. And then like six weeks later is semifinals. And then six to eight weeks later is the CrossFit games. And so with each part, it's just been like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how it's been. And like with the open, it was until I knew what the workout was, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do it or if I was just gonna have to just be out for another season. And it was like that for three weeks straight of just like waiting for the workout to come out. And <clears throat> every time it did, I just remember being like, it's doable. Am I gonna be the best at it? No, but is it doable? Yes. And uh, so that was kind of cool and then same thing with quarterfinals, um, and then when semifinals came around, um, that's a whole nother story in itself of what even happened at semifinals and what I was able to do. And what I was able to do on the floor was not nearly anything that I had done in training. And like you could talk to anybody in my community that's here at this gym and they saw the way that I was training before semifinals and they were all surprised. They are all like, what you were doing in training compared to what you were doing on the floor were two opposite things. There are just like so many miracles on the floor that happened that weekend that like I could just go on and on. But yeah, it's just kind of been the story of this year of like God can do a lot with a little. Um, and that's kind of just been shown over and over again this year that like, <laughs> my little is enough. Um, and so, yeah, it's just really, it's a cool, it's a cool story so far. And honestly, just making it to the CrossFit Games this year is like cherry on top. But everything just feels like awkward and like not coordinated and heavy. <laughs> and it's like a terrible, it's like a hard feeling, like going into the biggest competition of the year like that, you know? This, it's, it's hard to compare because it's so different. Like in the years past, like I'll get injured with my back, like leading up to the game, so I'll be out for like four to six weeks. Yeah. But throughout the year I've touched consistently heavy things or done hard things that I haven't really done this year, like a 200 pound sandbag, you know? Um, so it's hard to compare because like I haven't done any of that stuff Plus, I'm kind of going into it, I would say, healthier because I'm still like doing stuff two weeks before, you know? But in the back of my mind, it's like, but I still haven't done X, Y, and Z, you know? But that's how I was before semis. Like, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, this is, if I make it, like, it's not me, you know? Like, this is not me. <laughs> and it wasn't, like, I think, I don't know, I think for me, like God showed up in a huge way, like to show me like it's not in my own power. It's not, it's not supposed to be about me or me saying that I did this. So that's how I feel at least. So I feel like he's stripped everything away from me for like for me to actually have success. It's not gonna be in my own power. <laughs> and he's clearly showing me that. <laughs> so it's just about trust and faith and then if it's for me it's for me if it's not like there's something even better that's my mindset now but I'm also an athlete
not feel prepared, but I'm still going to do this and I'm still going to be brave um, and just like put myself out there and be vulnerable. So that's what I set out to do and that's what I'm going to continue to do and like whatever workouts I can push intuitively when I'm on the floor, I will. And then the things that I can't, whether it's because like I'm trying to be safe with my back or it's just volume and capacity, I just don't have it, then I just have to, you know, be smart. I just have to be smart. Well, I got bottle nose in the back at the beginning and I was like, oh man. But I knew it was gonna be like a long race, so I was just like, I'll be able to catch up. And then like, basically after the first turn, someone fell and like everybody fell, but it was like right in front of me, so I was able to get around it, like just in time. So, luckily it didn't fall at that point. I think on the second uh, round in the back, cause there's like some turns were gravel, some turns were grass, and the gravel was like super slick with the tires. Um, one in the back, I just like, just fell by myself. <laughs> no one was around me. Um, I was like, gosh dang it. I knew that was gonna happen, but I'm glad it happened like at the beginning compared to the end. Um, got a little flesh wound. It's all right. And then I think on like the third round when we were trying to get back on the bikes from being off, I like slipped off to the right and then I slipped off to the left. And then I think I finally got on the bike. <laughs> Uh, so I was like, oh man, it's had a lot of hiccups, but I felt like I made up a lot of ground by just being consistent, uh, which that's usually like my strong suit is like consistency and like longer workouts to be able to like make up ground slowly. I think I was like frustrated at the end of it because I made like a lot of mistakes that were kind of costly, I would say. And like my goal going into the first day was to give myself the biggest buffer I could because I just knew as the weekend went on, it was gonna get heavier and just harder overall. And I knew like on the first day, a lot of it was like lighter body weight stuff that usually when I'm at my best are like very good ones for me. But yeah, I mean, I ended up in six on that workout. I had like two girls pass me right at the end, but I was just like, I don't got it, you know? I was like, you go ahead, I don't got this. But um, overall, I felt like I was able to make up a lot of ground from the beginning till the end. With the pig chipper, I kind of went into it with some hesitation just because I haven't touched the pig in uh, probably two years. The closest thing we did was Wadapalooza 2022 with the flip sled, but it's kind of different than the pig. Um, other than that, did, did not touch it, which is kind of one of those things where it's like figure out how to warm up for it and just hope for the best. Once I did one rep, I was gonna, I knew in that moment, I was like, okay, like I'm either gonna be able to do this or I'm just gonna stand here for 20 minutes and look at the crowd um, or hurt myself. One of those, one of those three options. Um, but luckily I went to it and was able to flip it right away. And I was like, thank goodness, <laughs> this is great. It was a good one for me, but it was also really hard because we had a very quick transition from event one with the ride into that one. We had like maybe an hour to kind of reset, refuel, and then start warming up again. And it was on the field and it was super hot. Um, and it was just like a lot of work. It was a lot of grunt work, which I enjoy a lot, but realized that in that moment, I did not have the capacity to fully enjoy the moment and um, it just kind of got to me at the end. I love toe -to bar, I love chest to bar, I love wall balls, and I just felt like I was having to break it up a lot, which everyone does at the CrossFit Games. Like, everything's so far away, and it's just like different atmosphere of like being on the field, being in the heat, which brings a whole nother element and variables to um, the workout, but yeah, it was just really hot, and I just felt like I started falling apart on the back half. And then once I got back to the pig, I just didn't have enough like power output. I, I like picked it up for the first flip on the way back and I just, it slipped out of my hands completely. And I was like, oh gosh, dang it. No one else was having that problem. It seemed like it was just me. <laughs> so I had to like run back and like get chalk and a towel and I needed the rest anyways. I was like, oh, it's so out of breath. Um, let myself rest before I did it again. And girls just started passing me up left and right. And I was like, well, 
whatever. I'm just gonna do what I can because my body's only got so much power. So yeah, it was unfortunate at the end. <laughs> But I was just happy to honestly stay pain-free on that and that I was able to finish the workout and do all 20 uh, pig flips. Well, good. The, uh, yeah, the, the most, I guess, worrisome part was uh, the pig flip, but she moved it well. I think it was kind of like the sled in semifinals, like figure out like the first couple of reps, how it's gonna feel, and I don't know, she moved, finished, middle of the pack, the first round of pig flips, so that was perfect. I think uh, just the, the level of training that she's needed to have to kind of have that bigger base that she normally has, like she hasn't been able to do just because of her back, but like it's awesome that she can still hang like that and not be fully prepared, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. And then the big, the most important thing is like her back feels good right now. She just kind of ran out of gas, but like no back pain, so. That's, uh, that's the biggest part of getting through that second one. Yeah. So the handstand walk course, um, I was, I was kind of like disappointed in myself because I felt like that one would be a good one for me to make up some ground for the rest of the weekend. And it kind of just didn't execute, I didn't execute it really well, but I think it once again goes back to just the conditioning aspect of just like overall, just like my capacity to move quickly through things just wasn't there um, with any workout. Um, and in a workout like that, any type of mistake is very costly because it's very fast. Um, it was fun, it was a fun workout, but I kind of went into it thinking that I was gonna do a little bit better with the placement wise, but that's just showbiz sometimes, like just things happen and my arms blew up really quickly and uh, just had to rest more than I wanted to and that's how it ended. <laughs> but I mean, once again, I can't like be completely mad at myself because he once he was trying to point out to me like the freestanding handstand push-ups. I'd only been working on them for like the last couple of months, I guess, or weeks. Uh, so she was frustrated, but I was thinking back to like a month ago, it was like you were trying to do just three, four consecutive freestanding handstand push-ups and falling over, so. Yeah, even the handstand walk course I couldn't do for the longest time because that just put my back in this weird position and it just hurt it, so. The pullovers were a new movement to uh, the CrossFit Games, but it was cool to have new, it's always fun to have like the new elements where uh, you don't necessarily get to practice them and you just kind of have to figure it out on the fly. Um, but there, I guess at the same time there's frustrations with that because they don't allow us to do it in the warm-up area. So they're just like, well, the first time I get to do it is on the competition floor and hopefully I can do it. Um, and this time I couldn't right away. <laughs> and I feel like maybe in the past things have always kind of worked out for me so that's why I was a little frustrated. Um, but that is life, such is life. I was just kind of like frustrated after that workout because it wasn't one that was gonna be taxing on my back at that point where I was at and yeah I just felt like I could make a lot of moves there and just it didn't happen and I was like gosh dang it um, but that's okay <laughs> it is what it is you have like 12 to 15 events like there's got to be a hiccup here and there so just had to deal with it and roll with the punches and so I feel like overall I was able to handle that well but definitely had some tears after but I think that's okay I think that's healthy like if you don't have tears and you're not human or like just being frustrated with like disappointments you know it's just it's just life so it's gonna be disappointments but from where I was at like in January and even how I, where I was at last year, to be able to even do the stuff that I did on the floor today, like, I have to be happy. Like, I have to be proud of what I'm doing. And I told myself yesterday or the day before, it's like, it's brave what I'm doing. Because if you look at my program and give this to any other competitor, they would probably be freaking out inside because it's just like we're not doing a lot like there's not a whole lot of fitness thing going on this year um and i'm having to like constantly change things and like constantly saying no to like 
whatever is causing back pain. So, like, I gotta be proud of whatever I'm doing. Like, I'm being super brave and, like, being super vulnerable. Um, that's all I can ask for myself, which is to be proud of what I'm doing, even though it's not, it's not fooling me. That's not fooling me out of the world, and I know that. It is, it is hard and it's challenging. Um, it's also a real joy. It's been incredible to watch her add to her discipline, her physicality, which she's always had that talent, but to bring up her spiritual, mental game to a point now where she's got a foundation. She's okay either way. She can win this thing or not. She's gonna be okay either way. She's gonna give it her all and she's more than just an athlete. Where I think there, there was a lot of pressure early on. It's like, I've gotta, it's gotta happen. And now she knows more about herself and has more tools to bring that mental peace and the spiritual practice. And she's just as disciplined about those as she is about her workouts at the gym. The alpaca was an interesting workout. Um, it was a very heavy sled to where I three, two, one happened and I could not push it. I was like, oh boy, this is gonna be a long workout. And it was, I think it was for everyone. Um, I think that workout specifically was one of those that all the athletes will probably continue to talk about of how difficult it was. And there's just moments on the floor where I just remember just sitting there and like kind of looking to my left and right and we're all just sitting there on the mat with the rope climbs. Uh, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> we're all kind of, <laughs> we're all fatigued out. Um, so it's like, you had the element of being out, of course, in the sun, on the turf. Um, the sled was like 450 pounds. I don't know if I've ever pushed a sled that heavy. Um, and the rope climbs, the standards were just so, just, they're just hard um, and then the dual hang clean and jerks um, I kind of went into it just hoping my back wasn't gonna go out on me with that because haven't done that just like the theme of everything else in a year and a half and so I was a little hesitant with that um, but just try to take my time on it um, and it ended up working just fine and I think most of us time capped on that workout, so I didn't. But yeah, I feel like I, I paced it the way that I needed to, and I was able to finish all the rope climbs and get like two reps into the third round on the clean and jerks. And I think that was a big separator, so uh, I was glad to be able to do that part. But yeah, it was just a, it was an interesting workout to say the least. I feel mentally in a good place, so I think. Um, I think that's kind of like the beauty of the games is uh, you don't actually have to go as fast as you think you do or like unbroken on anything because everything's like spread out that it just everyone is just slow. <laughs> I mean to a certain extent. There, obviously there's workouts where you're going to go fast but with something like that you just kind of like go based off of the field and I don't know I, could, I probably couldn't have gone any faster than what I did but everyone was going that slow, so I was like, well, I'm just gonna kinda stay with the pack and just kinda rest a lot. I did what I needed to do and didn't hurt my back. That was the biggest thing, because I was feeling slightly weird before, like a couple, like an hour before I went out there, and I was like, oof, see how it feels with the kettlebell clean and jerks. I can't tell you the last time I did any kettlebell clean and jerks, so, especially at 53 pounds. So I'm just like proud of that and just happy to be able to like stick with fours on that and stick with a game plan and not break off of that uh, and it feel decent. Like I'm sure if I don't put my feet up right now, like my back's gonna get kind of weird, but um, whatever I'm doing is holding up. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, ski bag. Okay, that one was, uh, well, that one was terrible. Um, I've never, put a sandbag on my back and squatted with it. So I think, I think in general, even if I was at my best, that would have been probably a tough one for me. Um, but I was really worried going into that one just because we haven't done a lot of sandbag work this year. I probably have touched a sandbag five times and definitely not 125 pounds. 
Um, and then squatting this past year has been very minimal. Um, so doing 30 sandbag squats with 125 pounds, holding it with one arm was pretty brutal. And I just like didn't have the leg power at all to be able to do something like that. And Perrin was like, try to go unbroken on the 30. And I was like, okay. And then I got out there and like the first rep was a no rep. And I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna be so long. Um, luckily it was only a six minute time cap. So you only had to be out there for six minutes, but I had to break up those 30 sandbag squats like no other. I was just like, I have nothing in my legs. My legs feel so weak right now. So um, I knew that was gonna be a hard one going into it and it was 100% very hard and very awkward. It's like in those moments, you're just like, you go back to the, man, I wish I could have squatted all year. Uh, man, I wish I could have done that, but that wasn't my story. And so I was just like, those are the moments they just have to like reset and just like move on to the next workout and like not be, I think it's like really easy to be like embarrassed when you're out there, like with the way that things happened, but it's just like, what am I gonna do? Like I literally just, I haven't squatted this year. So yeah, I knew what was gonna happen on that workout and it, that's exactly what happened was, it was just completely brutal the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, there's been so many wins throughout the season. It's really unreal looking back now, especially where she was even three to six months ago, uh, the amount of progress she's made. And we often have to remind her of those things because I think it's easy, especially at the games right now where there's been some challenging tests and it's just things we haven't worked on because it wasn't worth the risk. So you can't expect to go over there and smash it, but her being a competitor, I think that's difficult because she knows what she's capable in a healthy body, but uh, honestly getting this far and her being able to perform fairly pain-free this entire time, I think getting through the games and being you know, proud of what she's accomplished, I think would be a huge goal in a healthy body. So, and a healthy body is a healthy mind. So that's really been the number one goal. But this competition more, I think, than semifinals, I've really seen the competitor in her come out, which is awesome. Like when she's not happy about a performance because she doesn't feel like she executed, but still took sixth place, I'm like, wow, this is, this is you, you know, this is what uh, makes you so good. Um, and it's okay not to be happy when you're not perfect. I think that's part of being an, a really good athlete. Helena was a good one for me specifically. The only thing I was worried about was the dumbbell snatches. Um, we hadn't, once again, just haven't done a lot of any repetitions, even at 35 pounds. I was kind of nervous going into that workout because um, I wanted to do well on that workout and I thought that there that is a moment for me to do well and I feel like sometimes that's just even more stressful so I just was like I was nervous and I wanted to push it but I also wanted to respect myself and not uh, like cap out or anything to the point where I couldn't recover from um, so it was like finding that balance but still trying to be uh, aggressive with the workout. So I felt like I found like a balance with that. Uh, I think that was a plus. Um, I was actually kind of worried about the bar muscle ups because for me, I can do high rep, but I usually rest at the top of the bar to get through the repetitions. And they weren't allowing that this year. Um, and so I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do 12 unbroken three times in a row. And plus this is like day two, workout number six. So you're already like kind of fatigued and tired. Um, but so I was like really, I was actually proud of that. I was like, yeah, I did it. Um, but yeah, that was overall like a really fun one. But anytime I see running in a workout, I'm like, it's good for me. Like I feel like overall out of the CrossFit athletes at the games, like I'm a better runner. And so I just try to take advantage of those moments when there is running. This is a great sport, you know, a new sport like this, you're, it's super competitive and you want to be competitive, but it can almost be addictive, like, you, because you wrap your whole life around this. You wrap, you're an influencer, you know, uh, this is what you do, you eat, uh, breathe, sleep this thing, and you can lose yourself in it, right? And it was kind of like seeing her 
find herself in that moment, right? Like, I'm going to compete in this, and I'm going to go, but I'm not going to be so consumed by this that it's going to take me. I'm going to take it. And, and so it felt like she had control that she'd never had before until that moment. All right, so day two ended with a cut. So we went from 40 people to 30, and then they were going to make another cut at the end of day three. So uh, day three started with a 5K run, and that is always a thumbs up for me. Um, running is always a great uh, workout for me, and I know that I can stay more at the front of the pack with that and place well. So I ended up being more of like a 4.5K, so it was a little bit shorter. Um, but everyone kind of started off like not slow, but not fast. So I just tried to stay with the pack and um, Emma Lawson actually had her watch on and I saw that and I knew that she's a pretty good runner. So I was just like, I think I'm just gonna draft off of her the entire time. And so that's basically what I did for, it was like three laps that we had to do. Um, and at the end, I just tried to kick and just try to pass her and, and I was able to do that. So it ended up being a six, another sixth place finish for me. Um, but yeah, it was, it was overall, I think, a great event for me. Um, I would have loved to push it even more just because it was a shorter run. But I just felt like, you know, risk versus reward once again of like, okay, maybe I get third place on that workout and I tried a lot harder, am I going to be able to recover from that? Or even sustain it out there if I did kick a lot earlier. Because um, I saw girls like kicking on the last lap when it started and I was like, ooh, I don't know if I have that. But I felt like maybe I could have if I had a little bit more capacity or conditioning under my belt. But anyways, I felt like I, I ran a good race and just kind of once again respected myself and pushed, but didn't push past the limit that I could come back from, um, and it ended up being a good workout for me. Event number eight, the intervals, uh, on paper, I was like, oh, this will be a fun one. But when I was out there, my capacity to push just like wasn't, wasn't there. Um, so I tried to stay with the pack as much as possible, but I think I was like one of the last ones to finish on that workout, at least in my heat. Um, well, at that time you were in the- The last heat. The last heat. Yeah. So it was, that's normally like when you're healthy, I think that's a really good workout for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause you're really good at rowing normally when it doesn't bother you. And then yeah. the box jumps feel like you're just as fast as everybody else. My technique was a little bit differently on the box jump overs. I wasn't allowing my, like going, going into like a bottom of a squat. Um, kind of on purpose, like one, I have never really practiced that, even though I know it's a lot quicker, but I knew like I wasn't gonna do that this time around just because I was worried about jamming up my back um, or just, yeah, just causing more harm than good by doing that. But it was a lot slower out there, and so I knew that once I was in the warm-up area and I saw everybody else's technique compared to mine, that, okay, I'm gonna lose some ground doing that, but um, I just had to run my own race with that, and so I did. I would have loved to go faster on the rower, but um, just haven't gotten to row a lot this year, so just had to go. I went faster than I have all year, but it wasn't as fast as I would have liked to and where everybody else was. I think maybe everyone was rowing around 14 to 1600 calories per hour. Um, and I was probably like at 12 to 1300. So you just like lose time on a workout that's very quick like that. Um, and honestly, it, th that is actually a hole in my game, even when I am healthy, is like speed work. So it's something that I need to continue to work on is just like being quicker. And yeah, I just always start off really slow. And so if it's gonna be a quick workout like that, you, you lose, you already lose the workout if you don't come out aggressive. So it's one thing that going back to the drawing board, I have to continue to work on is just being more aggressive out of the, the gate and just knowing, just knowing that I can hold that pace. Um, 
and just trusting my body. So when I am healthy, but anyways, I think I, I uh, respected my body with what I could do on that workout. And I was just like, ah, that's all I got. So, and I came out of it pain-free. So that's all I could, could ask for. The Olympic total, we knew about this one well before the CrossFit Games started. Um, and we just knew that this was gonna be a workout where we're just gonna have to take a big L on um, and not hope that other people like don't hit their lifts, but like maybe, maybe something would happen to where I, I don't get last place. Uh, that was not the case. I got last place on that workout. Um, and I just tried to respect myself as much as possible. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna squat clean. I was only gonna power clean. And the most I had power cleaned or squat cleaned this year was like 195. So my goal was just try to hit something around that. I wanted to do like 195 and then 205 for my second lift, but um, we had one, a really quick turnaround. So we only had like maybe an hour to refuel and start warming up again. Um, two, your quads were blown up from the workout right before from the intervals. And this is day three like you're pretty tired. So we kind of just, he game plan and he was like, uh, I think you should open up with like 180 and then maybe try to go for like 195 uh, if it feels good. So yeah, that's what we did. I think it was overall a safe plan. I almost just went like 190 for the second lift because I knew I was gonna be last place and it was like risk versus reward of like PRing my power clean this year. Um, and like possibly hurting myself doing it was pretty, I mean, it was on the board, but I kind of looked up at the stands. And I was trying to like find Randy and Perrin and I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> and uh, Perrin was like, 196. So I was like, okay, I hope. Obviously the goal through it was just come out the other side and be able to finish the competition. So um, she touched on it a little earlier, like that one's, that's a hard experience to go out there and know that, all right, this isn't a good workout for me. Like, maybe this is kind of embarrassing. Like other girls are, you got a girl out there clean and jerking 265 and I've got 195 <laughs> on there, but it's like, it's not about that. I think, yeah. uh, I think a couple of things were accomplished there. Like she had to be vulnerable and get out there and, and push it a little bit. And then also like that was a PR within the last year. So it was like something you can take away from it is I can stress myself like this after, you know, however many events were before that multiple days of stress and my body can still handle it. So I know that now even in a less chaotic situation where it's more organized, I have more recovery in a training scenario, I can definitely handle it then, you know what I mean? So I think it's a confidence builder with those weights now to use for training moving forward. Yeah, and then the snatch, I think we kind of went into it with the goal of trying to hit what we hit at semifinals, which was 175, but uh, with the quick turnaround and just how I was feeling in the warm up area, like everything was feeling super heavy and I was just like, uh, I don't know if I have it. So we just went with 155 or 156 and 166. That first one was not great and I almost completely missed it. <laughs> uh, I seem to do that though. I feel like I need to like go and do like Olympic weightlifting meets because I just like black out and I forget how to lift. And I think that's exactly what happened in that moment. Um, but then I was able to feel a little bit more comfortable with the 166 uh, lift on the snatch. But I was like, oh boy, this is not a great way to start. <laughs> if I miss this, this is not great. Um, but I guess I had nothing to lose because I knew I was getting last place anyways. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it's always a humbling experience when you're out there and there's girls lifting double what you're lifting. but had to run my own race and at least I went four for four and I was out of pain so it was a win for me. So this is uh, day four. Workout number one was ring muscle ups and more sandbags. We had to take the sandbag over a log. 
Uh, not something we got to practice in the warm-up area because they it did not exist. We had coaches with their arms out like this and people trying to throw sandbags over the coaches' arms. That didn't work very well. Um, Which yeah. admittedly was like a monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. Yeah. Cause like I don't, I don't think either myself or Perrin were thinking about that. And then we yeah. saw somebody just like, <laughs> and then we tried it and it was like, <laughs> the bag just pushed my arm down to here and it was like you may as well have just imagined it going over something. I knew once that got announced I was like all right this is uh we're not gonna be winning this workout that's for sure um and yeah on the first round on the muscle ups it was seven and I got no reps on the seventh rep and once that happened it was goodbye staying with any type of pack. I wasn't gonna win that workout anyways, but yeah, that kind of put me way behind after that last rep. I was like, gosh dang it. And then, yeah, I just had a hard time with like the sandbags and it was just, it was a tough one for me. I was like, gosh dang it. But luckily for me, I was in like a good head space that I just tried to not let it bother me. Um, and I tried to like, take the same approach as I did with the weightlifting and just like find my people. And I saw Randy right at the end in a bright blue shirt and I just like looked at him the entire time and I was like, he loves me no matter what. It's not contingent on how I do on this workout and I can just go out here and just take my time on it and just soak in the moment. Um, and so yeah, that's what I did. I don't want to say like I gave up, but there wasn't like a ton of urgency on my part, but I also didn't want to like hurt my back lifting those sandbags up. So yeah, I definitely just like, kind of just took my time on that workout and just kind of looked around and I'm like, falling behind even more. Yep, this is what's happening. Okay, but um, it's always like, those workouts are good too, to go back to the drawing board of like, okay, when I am healthy, this is something great to work on. Those are always good moments, but. Overall, it was, it's, a, it's always sucky to be like one of the last ones on the field and just be like, don't got it, but it's okay. I, I was able to come out of that workout mostly pain-free. I had a, like a little bit of tightness in my back after that workout, but there was like no nerve pain. Um, so I can't be mad about that. And I can't be mad about not being able to push it just because of where my capacity was at. Second to last workout, we had the parallel bar workout. Um, once again, this was something that we didn't get to practice because it was not in the warm up area. So you had to kind of just figure it out on the fly. Um, I guess I would say the girls last year had a one up just because they did do the parallels last year. Um, and I, we don't have them at our gym, but there is another gym that's close to us that does have somewhat of some parallels. With that, um, and also too, I think an anatomy thing for some girls, some girls can like lock out their elbows and they have double jointed elbows. And so it's like easier for them to like do stuff like that or handstand walk. Uh, for me, mine barely straightened. So it's more muscular than skeletal for me. Uh, and so I just like blew up really quickly too on that. But yeah, that was definitely hard. So I just like tried to like take my time and like take a breath before I did that because I was like, I'm gonna fail. Um, and then it was just like a super grippy workout. And I just like decided to make my own goal during that workout. I was like, okay, the other parts I might not be able to like push, but I'm gonna try to go unbroken on my double unders every round. And I was able to do that. So I was like, that's cool. I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, the sled was, it wasn't bad, but I just knew I wasn't gonna be able to get into like full flexion and get like a huge pull out of the rope and it was just gonna have to be very short and choppy, um, which ends up making it very taxing on your forearms, I would say even more. Um, and so, yeah, that's just kind of how it was. Like, it was a long eight rounds on the floor. You're like, oh wow, okay, this is long. Um, and you can just feel your grip uh, round by round just starting to go, so. Uh, definitely felt that the entire time and I think once again it's just from overall where my conditioning and my capacity is you're just not able to move lactic acid very well when you're not as uh, conditioned and so it's just what I was feeling I was just like feeling everything kind of blow up really quickly and so 
I just had to go at a pace that I knew was sustainable for me personally and not try to get on somebody else's race. It was just, she was so, she was in such a different place. She was at such peace and she was a completely different athlete out there. And she really had this attitude of like, I don't have anything to lose, I'm just gonna go for it. And she took each workout and she wasn't even sure if she was gonna even be able to do it. And I could see a change in her face, like she was really enjoying it and she was at peace. And, um, it, and then uh, at one point she's out there and I'm up in the stands with Randy's parents and, and Todd and I was able to do this heart to her and we got the picture of that. And it just you know, touched my heart that she was happy and that she was you know, doing what she loved doing again. It was just wonderful. It just makes my heart so happy because I know that she still feels like she has more to do. Like she's still got things that she wants to accomplish, whether it's being on the podium or not. You know, I feel like God's using her in other areas um, to help others along the journey that's, that are following her. And so um, it's been just fun to see her getting excited out there again. I know she's exhausted. She's not used to doing all this stuff. She's doing amazing and we're really proud of her, so. So the finale workout on paper, uh, I actually really liked because it was disgusting. I love the Echo Bike and I love thrusters. Um, but just once again, the theme is just haven't been able to do a lot of that stuff this year. I think the last time I did an actual thruster was during the open. Um, every time I tried to do one after that, it just didn't feel great on my back. So well, let alone doing one, I haven't done whatever 50 something reps of that with ascending weight. I was like, oh gosh. Um, so there was that and then the wrinkle was my back was a little tight from the sandbag workout earlier that day. So anytime I tried to do an air squat in the warm up, I could just feel my back tightening up. With a thruster, you want to use momentum. So it's like you almost, you do want to bottom out so you can use that to get you up. And um, yeah, it's just, not, it's just not been my friend this year, even though I actually enjoy doing thrusters. I'm one of those weirdos that likes them. I would have loved to like just go out there and crush that workout or at least be more competitive, but that wasn't my story. And at least I can say, you know, today, the next day after the event that I'm not in a bunch of pain. So I'm glad I was able to kind of just finish the workout and put a bow on the weekend. Um, we are forever changing human beings and that's how life is too. Um, and just to be, you want to be proud of the way that you responded and reacted in those storms and when there's things not going in your way and when things are stacked against you. Um, and that was like my goal this year is to continuously be proud of the way that I responded during hardships. That doesn't mean being perfect, you know, in every moment, whether it's a mundane moment, whether it's a happy moment or whether it's a storm that you're going through is to like find the W's and find the joy in every moment. So. That is the goal, it doesn't mean that I'm perfect at it. I definitely have hiccups and I did that this weekend, had some hardships and had to just reset. But um, I've found, I think overall, like a lot more fulfillment out of this year than the years past because it's drawn out a lot of resilience in me. I think the best takeaway is just like realizing that I don't have to allow my mind to control me. I think for the longest time, I just allowed my negative thoughts to become my reality for most of my life. And so that was like my biggest takeaway from this year is like, no, I actually get to choose uh, what I think. Um, I get to choose uh, my thoughts in my head. And I think that's amazing as far as growth as a person. I think it's very easy for these athletes to lose a sense of who they are because their identity gets so wrapped up in being an athlete and that is part of who they are that but it's not all that who they are and I think her process of working on herself for the past few years and I would say argue her whole life um, has been 
really important to help her get where she is now and, and all the things she's battled uh, have created the person that she is in this moment and I think that person transforms throughout your whole life and certainly her career in the sport. Bethany at 100% is dangerous, yeah. I, no doubt in my mind, especially after this weekend, I think that confirms it even more. I mean, she's taking top 10 finishes in a lot of events and we haven't even touched 100%. You know? So I'm really excited for the future for her. But you know, sometimes those desert experiences really let you come to a whole new place. And I think that's what we both feel has really happened with Bethany. And we're, we're really excited about what's what's happening there, what's beginning to really happen. Mm -hmm. Not just in her mindset, but even just the way she's thinking about things, the way she's speaking about things now. Um, it, it's really exciting to watch that come out. And uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's gonna be really exciting over the next year too. I get to choose my, my headspace and my mindset. No one else gets to do that. Um, and so I think that's gonna be really important, not only just as an athlete, but also just continuing to grow as a human being uh, and being a good wife and uh, a future mom and whatever, whatever like hardships I go through, because this isn't gonna be the only storm that I go through. <laughs> this is just a storm now currently, but there's gonna be other storms. So it's like taking these tools that I'm getting right now and being able to use them uh, later in life. I think are very important for growth.